Hey guys, I'm Laura. And I'm Corey. And today we're looking at what makes God different from all of us. There's a lot of things that makes God different from us. He's almighty, he's perfect, he's always with us. Definitely, and all of those things are true, but the one thing I can always count on is we can trust God to keep his promises. And sometimes he answers his promises in ways that we'll never understand, but they're always great. Watch this. The big brown bear bit the big black bug on the big black bug's bud, and the, oh. Hey everybody, welcome back. God story number four, and this one starts just like the last one with me driving. Like I said, I was driving on a road and I got a phone call from a friend and this friend was supposed to be meeting up with me and they bailed on me. And this was not the first time. This was actually many, many times. And the reason was good, just like all the other times before. And you know, sometimes it came through, sometimes it didn't, but it was just becoming more and more of a pattern. And it was becoming more and more evident to me that I am not a priority in this friend of mine's life. And so at the end of the conversation, they're like, are you mad at me? And honestly, I wasn't, but it was just a person I couldn't count on anymore. This is trust. And this was not an angry moment, a bit of a sad moment, but ultimately, a freeing moment. And the big idea of this God story is that we can actually trust God to keep his promises. We've been looking at Abraham, who at 99 years of age had his name supernaturally changed to Abraham, the father of many nations, even though at that point in his life, at 99, he didn't even have one child. But now we're gonna look at Sarah, his wife, who at 90, also didn't have a child, and what that meant for her as a woman, as a wife, and what was gonna go forward. But let's jump in, we're in uh, Genesis chapter 21. The Lord kept his word, and did for Sarah, Abraham's wife, exactly what he had promised, and she became pregnant. And she gave birth to a son for Abraham in his old age. And this happened at just the time that God had said it would. And Abraham named their son Isaac. Now, young ladies, I'm talking to you, but young men, I'm also talking to you. One of the most important things we can offer to you in this moment is this, this absolute God-ordained need to correct the views of women in our culture. And we need to recognize that how women have been treated throughout history is absolutely, horrifically, and nightmarishly wrong. Women are people, not property. And in Sarah's day and age, the only thing that gave a woman value was her ability to produce children, was the kind of man that she was married to. There wasn't a lot resting on her own identity, her own strengths. And that, as believers, we are called to combat. And if you, if you doubt that at all, just look at the way Jesus treated women. So Sarah was given this child. She was given the ability to be a mother even though her husband was 100 years old and she was 90 years old. This is insane. This is like your great grandparents having a baby. What would that even be to you? Your great grandparents baby would be your grandparent. This is this crazy story. This is this crazy promise of God, which means even when it doesn't look like it, God you can trust to fulfill his promises. Okay, so let's keep digging in. Eight days after Isaac was born, Abraham circumcised him as God had commanded. Back to this again. So hopefully you were here for God story number three when we covered this. This is a God ordained uh, event because let's face it, no man on earth would ever come up with this. Abraham recognizes that Isaac is part of this promise. And so he lives up to his end of the promise and continues this covenant relationship with El Shaddai, with the Lord Almighty. And Sarah declared, God has brought me laughter. All who hear about this will laugh with me. Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse a baby? Yet I have given Abraham a son in his old age. This is still just a great story, a, a great ending? No, this is just a fantastic element of this faithfulness of God's promise. This God who walked through the carcasses, who entered into covenant, who made these promises, who even used the word guarantee as being shown to be faithful. Even though Abraham and Sarah had to wait so many years, God remained faithful. And the faithfulness of God is not just the backbone of this story, it's the backbone of what we now call the Bible. If we look at the Bible as like, a, as like an epic movie, a superhero thing, a, a comic book theme, the star of it is God. Not, not David, not Abraham, not Sarah, not Moses. These are all people who, who play a role in the grand story that is God's story. And it's God's story of interacting with us. And the story remains God's faithfulness, God's ability to work through even 
us, even in our darkest and most shame-filled moment. And this finds its pinnacle, the, the, the tip of the mountain on this story is the story uh, of, of a Jewish peasant from Nazareth named Jesus. And even hanging up on a cross for doing nothing other than talking about love and healing and trying to bring restoration, that incredibly dark, disastrous moment becomes the moment of human salvation that begins with and continues through on, on the main theme of God's faithfulness to us. No matter how much we mess up, God remains faithful. This is the element I'm trying to give to you because I don't want you to be mired down in the mistakes you make. You're young, you are supposed to be making mistakes, but I want you to remember that how big you mess up, how little you mess up, whatever it all is, at the core of your faith is the character of God who is faithful to you. You believe in God and you'll be able to see how much God believes in you. So that's it for now. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'm me, you're you, and I respect us both. And we'll see you next time. Hey, have you ever had to wait a really long time for something you really wanted? Yes, when I was seven years old, I could not wait to have my driver's license so I could drive my dad's car. I wanted to get behind that wheel so bad and it felt like I was waiting forever. But when I finally got my license, it felt so good. I can definitely relate to that. I was the same. But isn't it crazy how in life sometimes we get so impatient waiting for the things that we want? In Abraham and Sarah's story though, we see that God always delivers his promises no matter how long it takes. That's so true. And now my friend James has an interesting story about how he learned to trust God and I asked him to share it with you guys. Let's check it out. I grew up playing soccer. I played indoor and outdoor for about eight years. Um, and I just love how you're with people, you're running around, I love scoring goals and I love playing sports with people. In elementary school and uh, middle school, I was bullied. Um, two guys, for some reason, they didn't like me. So one day they'd treat me as a friend, another day I'd be their enemy. Um, it, was, it was a mixture of just emotional, verbal, and sometimes physical um, bullying and just dealing with that. And it was a new school too I was at, so it was difficult for me to try and make friends and, and see where I stood in that relationship. It was really hard, um, especially when if there's a circumstance where someone calls you something or challenges you to something um, in front of a big group of people. Um, you don't know how to react. It's awkward, it's embarrassing. I had no idea what to do and, or how to deal with it or how to respond. My mom would be there, she'd comfort me, she'd pray with me and, and allow me to talk through it and talk with me and process that. There'd be times where I'd come back from school crying and, and just breaking down and selling what happened that day. And they prayed for me, they prayed with me. That gave me more support and I wasn't kind of a lone ranger going through that. My relationship with God and my um, faith uh, at the time really carried me through that. My parents pointed me towards that and um, just praying with them and praying by myself, um, just asking God for strength to go through it, praying for safety for the bullies and then I found a verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3, and it just says, Blessed is the God who comforts us through our difficulty so that in the future we we're able to comfort others. And just having that hope and being reminded of that, that God is with me, and regardless of what happens at school, that um, He's with me through it all, and that He um, can use that to comfort others in the future, that was really something that helped me through it. Today, it's completely different. I had that dark spot in my life, but God brought me through that. He provided me with friends that um, I could goof off with, I could be myself with, and who just love me for who I am. Um, and I'm so thankful for that. He came through on his promise. What he said in the Bible, in that verse that I mentioned, that um, his promises came through, he comforted me through that. And um, because of that, now I'm, I'm secure where I am now. And when I look to the future, I know that he has my best intentions um, in mind and that because of what he did in the past, I can now um, feel secure in his plans and not um, have to worry about that. Why are so many kids getting bullied and why do people feel the need to bully others? 
Yeah, those are some tough questions. And to be honest, we can't answer those today or in a week or even a month from now. But what I have learned from James is that while he was being bullied, he held on to God's promise. And that promise gave him the strength to get through the hard times and even gave him the strength to pray for the bullies, which I think is super cool. Yeah, that's incredible. Let's break into our small groups now and talk about this.